everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. In this video I'm going to take a look at John McLaughlin's solo on the song No Blues, which in this case is a blues in G. I think it's a great example of how he improvises. I think he's mostly famous for playing really a lot of notes, but actually in this case he's also leaving a lot of space. He's playing a lot of blues phrases, quite a lot of pentatonic scale phrases as well. When he plays eight note lines there's a lot of sort of shifting atonal lines happening that are quite interesting. And another thing that I also like about this solo is that he has a few melodic ideas that he actually returns to and in that way ties the solo together over several choruses. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and prove the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios and chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first example is really at the beginning of the solo, so we get the pickup at the end of the theme and then just the first part of the first chorus. The pickup is on beats 3 and 4, he starts really high with, with his E and D. Really the theme is of course really in sort of a blues sound, this really minor pentatonic, minor blues sounding theme. And he kind of sticks with that kind of sound with going down to the B flat, so he leaves space just at the beginning of the chorus so he, and plays just to pick up and then just create some tension by not playing anything and just keeping the rhythm section there coming in a little bit later. Then we get uh, this phrase and really what's happening here in terms of the note material is that the first part of the phrase is really this type of scale which is G minor 6 pentatonic uh, and then from there he finishes that phrase by going into kind of resolving it into G7 and he does this also dynamically you can really hear that he's really taking that down so it's almost like the resolution is hidden a little bit. This example is a little bit later in the first chorus and here he's so I'm still staying with the sound of the theme, so we're still in the minor pentatonic sound. So, And then of course some of the lines that he's playing right now here with, with the large intervals is really moving away from the strict sort of pentatonic sound, so you can really hear that he's moving into some, some more jazz material, even though it's just a fifth interval. And then we get... Which is still back to the blues. And then here in the middle of the turnaround we get this phrase which is a C and an A and there's nothing really peculiar with in, in the note choice really in, in what's happening with the chords but since we've not really had anything that sounds like that in terms of just until now the whole thing has been and then all of a sudden we get some extensions with the, with the A in there that are kind of coming out of nothing and really creating an interesting contrast. And I think another thing that's also interesting about this is that he chooses to do this not at the beginning of the chorus but in the middle of the turnaround. So timing wise this is also sort of moved around and he's still playing sort of with this open feel which is again not necessarily long notes, at least a lot of the people I play with if we play open then we end up playing a lot of really long notes. He doesn't really do that, he just leaves a lot of space and comes with some interesting note choices but not in the obvious places. This example is a little bit longer, in fact it's a whole chorus and that's because he here introduces a motif that he returns to throughout the solo. I just wanted to also mention how that works and you'll see it come back in some of the other examples and I also want to show how he's working with some of his more shifted, more dense eighth note lines that he starts to use in this chorus. So the first thing is that he's really just introducing the main motif which is just this short uh, scale fragment and then he develops it a uh, bar later and then from here on he kind of goes away from it for a bit, so moving down to a D flat, I guess the blue note, and then a chromatic approach to, to the B and the G, so really just playing kind of like an A flat, moving down to G, and then we 
get something like a D flat seven line. And then moving to C7. And here he's actually clearly moving to the C7 and playing a very clear C7 line. Probably one of the few places where he's really spelling out changes in the solo. Returning to G7. He usually would expect to get an E7 or a D half diminished E7 here. That's not really there. It's more, it's closer to a B flat minor, if anything. So, but it's a lot of chromaticism. And then on the A7 to D7, a lot of shifting. Again, he's really using shifting thirds both in a diatonic and also in a chromatic way. So, in the beginning on the G7, you get the really a lot of moving around in third intervals and here on the in the final cadence we also get just all minor third intervals and then going back to the next part on the D7 also all minor third material so really the, this minor third so from B flat to D flat and from B to D some fourth intervals which are actually not that common in his playing he doesn't play a, a lot of fourth intervals he really sticks to a lot of chromaticism a lot of scale movement and a lot of thirds in his lines that I can keep on making videos is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support. It's because of them that I can keep on making all these videos on music theory and jazz guitar. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. <laughs> After ending the previous chorus with a long, really dense eighth note line, then he opens things up again by leaving just a lot more space. He's not really playing anything for the rest of the turnaround. And this example is coming right after that. And here he's just starting off with just playing the minor third, so really just returning to sort of a blues sound on top of the G7. And then we get a return to the motif that he started with in the previous chorus also. So we get... And then developing this turning into really to a G7 so and then on the C7 back to the one single B flat and then really just playing chord tones out of C7 and then back to G7 just the B flat again and then a sort of a peculiar line on the E7 which which I think again is just a return to some more sort of chromatic uh, switching and side slipping really and that's also what he continues with in the rest of that chorus, what happens in the final cadence. In this example, he starts with something that's pretty simple and pretty much in the changes and really sticking to what is in the chords. And he's playing a G7, kind of implying a C7, and then he just gradually starts to slip away from that and move into more and more sort of vague, atonal or chromatic improvisation, and then still manages to sort of slip back into resolve onto the C7 in bar five. So the first part is really just, and then just scale movement, moving that motif up. And then we get the, again, really a lot of diatonic thirds, a lot of uh, thirds movement in his melodies. Then we first get this phrase, which you could consider sort of a blues phrase, but then he moves that up, a minor third. So I think that's also just, uh, the idea here is to just move things around uh, in, in a minor third. And then finally on the G here, he's resolved to C7. 
where the phrase in between doesn't really have anything to do with any kind of G7 or really any C7. And then after that, we get this phrase, which may sound kind of angular, but at the same time also would fit quite well if he's trying to resolve to a C sharp diminished in the sort of second bar of the C7. I find it really interesting to make these videos on John McLaughlin uh, because his playing is so different from anything else that I've checked out. I think there are some parallels with other, actually also one of his contemporary, namely Alan Holdsworth, because he's also using a lot of chromatic material in the middle of lines and it can be kind of vague what is going on. Uh, but at the same time, Holdsworth plays completely different melodies. His melodies are not as scalar and also not as um, third spaced as, as John McLaughlin. So that way John McLaughlin really has his own sort of language and the way he uses this and also the way he plays some really outside things on top of the changes on a blues and G like this, I think is really interesting. If you want to check out another guitar player that I also think has a really great modern and also really personal language, then check out this playlist where I have a few videos on John Schofield. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.